storms. That's what I'm going to uh, just speak about briefly this morning. Have we got on? Yes, look at that. Oh, and it's down here as well. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Let me read you a story that uh, we read in Mark's Gospel. And in Mark's Gospel, we read about a storm. I mean, in one sense, I was sort of led to this message this week uh, on the basis that it just hasn't stopped raining, has it? Oh, just rain, 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 rain. But also this week, a number of times I've spoken with people and um, they've shared some of the challenges that they're going through at this moment in time. Things are just not easy, like storms. That day, evening came. He said to his disciples, that's Jesus, said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves break, broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? It was early this year, um, Carol and I and uh, Bruce headed out in our caravan. And we popped off in our caravan just for a couple of nights away. Um, we didn't check out the weather forecast uh, early in the year and um, it rained. And not only rained, it absolutely chucked it down. But not only did it chuck it down with rain, it also uh, had some serious heavy-duty winds. So we had a caravan, just like our caravan there in the picture, and our awning, and uh, it's sort of about three o'clock in the morning. I'm laid in bed and I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if that awning's going to take off. Got to about four o'clock in the morning and the sound of flapping outside sort of increased. And I think it must have been about five or something in the morning that uh, the pegs that held it down to the ground um, decided that they were going to let go. And the awning then is flapped up and it's flapped over the top of the caravan. Mm. At which point um, my wife says, uh, you better go out and sort that out. Um, and I think she was just giving me prayer cover inside. So she stayed in nice and dry. And I went out in my jammies in the rain. It was lashing down in the wind. And I took this uh, awning down, rolled it all up and, uh, and stuck it in the boot of the car and got back in the caravan. Absolutely drenched. <laughs> Storms. Storms. They come along and uh, they catch us off guard more often than not. We're not ready for them in a sense. And they impact us. They make a mark upon us. And the storm that uh, comes to these disciples in the boat uh, is a bit of a challenge to them because they have followed Jesus around and they have seen Jesus teaching to significant groups of people. They've seen Jesus ministering to people. He um, heals and sets people free. And then suddenly they are in a boat in the middle of a storm and everything goes a little bit pear-shaped. And they start to panic. But just in our situation, as we find challenges and difficulties, we've got to remember this. We must learn that the presence of the storm does not mean that God has gone. The presence of a storm doesn't mean that God has gone. 
Many people, many of you, have found yourselves in challenging circumstances and situations. And it's not the point where we turn around and say, God, where were you? The reality should be that we turn around and say, God, thank you that you are here. This uh, word from the book of Isaiah reminds us that uh, when you pass through the waters, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Saviour. And it's almost like the prophet Isaiah is writing to uh, encourage us to recognise that we won't be without challenges. Challenges will come, but they won't take over. We can go through the storms if we recognise that God is with us. He is with us. You see, Jesus' desire is that we would day by day find ourselves putting more trust in him, more faith in him, because each day we recognise something more of his love for us and his character which is always merciful and gracious. But the disciples have uh, a few problems. The problem starts off with them saying, uh, teacher, in the middle of this storm, teacher, do, do, you, do you not care if we drown? And it's really interesting because they've walked with Jesus, they know what he is like, he is a good God. but suddenly they're disturbed. They find themselves on the lake in the middle of the storm and they're questioning whether they are going to survive. A little sub-note. If you look at the words in Mark's Gospel where we started our reading, Mark 35, it says this. That day when evening came, he said to, this is Jesus, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. So when they find themselves in a storm in the middle of the lake, they're starting to question, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Yet they have forgotten the word that Jesus spoke. Let us go to the other side. You see, Jesus brought a promise. He promised that we're going to the other side. He didn't say we're going to go to the other side and it will be absolutely smooth sailing, but he did say we're going to get to the other side. And sometimes I think we need to recognise that God has given us promises that we need to hold on to. And when we find things a little bit challenging, to remember those promises rather than to fix our eyes on that which is causing us upset at this moment in time. So they ask the question, don't they? Jesus, teacher, teacher, don't you care if we drown? And it's almost like there's an opportunity to, for the disciples to realise that just because you are walking with Jesus doesn't mean that everything's going to be easy going. Look what it says here in Matthew 5. It says in Matthew 5 that we uh, may be sons of your Father in heaven. He causes the sun to rise on Eve. What we do, we cast all of our anxiety onto him because he cares for you. So there's Jesus asleep on a cushion, back of the boat. There's the disciples having a panic moment. The good thing is, they called upon Jesus. 
Now, the way they called upon him was a little bit uh, unconventional, I suppose. Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? But at least they called on Jesus. That They didn't all huddle together and say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, guys? They said, oh, no, no, this is the one that we go to. And this is what Peter reminds us, that when you're going through the challenges, cast all your cares, all your anxiety onto him because he cares for you. It means that we stop for a moment and we turn to Jesus and we say, Lord, this is hard. Help me. Lord, I need your peace. I need your presence. Thank you that you do not desert me. You see, the truth that we recognise is that there is a battle going on. And the battle is between good and evil. It's between God and the devil. And you see, that battle is raging around us all of the time. And it draws us in. And that sometimes the enemy sends stuff our way, in a sense, to derail our relationship with God. Let's make it difficult for them. You can see the demons working together. What can we do to make this more difficult for them to walk with God? But this is one truth that I want you to realise today. What the devil sends to destroy you, God will use to strengthen you. What tragic situations and circumstances that we find ourselves in, what difficulties that we carry, what hardships that come our way, God will work in them and through them. He never leaves us or forsakes us. This is what the Apostle Paul writes to the church in Ephesus. He says this, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. There's very much a sense that, you know, we found ourselves aligned with the enemy and now we've come to the other side and we've recognised we've moved from darkness to light. We are wanting to follow Jesus but some stuff still is happening in our lives. But we also got to be aware that that stuff is very much stirred up by the enemy and is impacting those people around us as well. And therefore we get tarnished with the stuff that's going on. But in the midst of the difficulties, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the stuff that we're saying, oh God, why me? This is something else that Paul says. All things work together for good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. So even the rough stuff can be worked out. The rough stuff can help us to become more like Christ. Let me give you some storm truths. Here's storm truth number one. We are stronger because of the storm. We're stronger because of the storm. One of the things that I, I remembered as um, studying agriculture is that heavy amounts of water coming down means that Water penetrates, more water penetrates the ground, which means that the roots can go deeper. And it's one of those things that uh, um, one of the psalmists talks about uh, the fruitfulness of a tree that is planted by a river. This whole idea that your roots can go deep and therefore if you've got deep roots, when stuff comes along, the winds force around you, you're able to stand. We are stronger because of the storm. Because the storm has come, we are able to be strengthened. It's, it's the continual movement of the tree in the wind 
that strengthens the trunk so that it can stand more. It's like training muscles. I have no experience of this whatsoever, but people who go to the gym and they work out, the whole idea is that we break down muscles so that those muscles will grow bigger. Break down, go bigger. That's what aching is. Aching is about breaking muscles so that they can grow again. As I say, I have no experience of that. But those people who work their muscles become stronger. This is what Jeremiah reminds us. He will be like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots into the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. It leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. In the difficult times, in the storm time, when the water gives an opportunity for roots to grow. And I think it's hard. But sometimes we have to say, Lord, thank you for this storm. Thank you for this storm. So we're stronger because of the storms. And of course, because we are stronger, we give thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the storm. We can have real gratitude. This is what Paul writes to the Philippians. He says, it's not that I'm saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Do you know, sometimes our circumstances ain't great, but we can still say, thank you. Thank you. Here we are in a warm church building this morning. Thank you, Lord. We're not cold. We're not wet. Thank you, Lord. We have food on the table. Thank you, Lord. There may be stuff going on, but there's still loads that we can give thanks for. And because of the thankfulness, it it also reminds us and teaches us that in the storm we can have real peace. You see, Jesus' words to the storm, when he got up off of that cushion where he'd been asleep, he said, peace, be still. And the moment that he said, peace, be still, the storm subsided, dissipated, disappeared. Those challenges that come our way, those relational difficulties, those financial uh, uh, demands. Peace, be still. We speak to the storm and then we receive real peace. What we recognise that in the boat, in the storm, Jesus was asleep. Which just reminds us that Jesus isn't phased by the storms. Whatever we're going through, recognise it's not too big for Jesus. He can carry you through. He can bring about an amazing sense of peace. Paul again reminds us in Philippians, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The question is, how how can you be so chilled in the midst of what you're going through? Jesus. That's why. I've taken hold of that word from Peter that says, cast all my anxieties, all my fears, all my cares onto him. And because I have cast them onto him, they're no longer on me. And I receive his peace. Storms teach us about real peace. Storms also teach us about uh, real strength. Paul again writes to the church in Corinth and says this, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. This is 
not a sense of that we puff out our chests and we become all bold and brazen in a sense. It's not that we uh, strut around saying, look at me, I'm an overcomer. But it's recognising that in and through the storm, I'm coming through because God's grace over me is sufficient. And as the body of Christ, as the family of God, as the members of a church like us, as we gather together, as we love one another, as we share with one another the highs as well as the lows, one of the things that happens, which is really important, is that if your experience mirrors somebody else's experience that you've been through and they're going through, you have this brilliant opportunity to stand together, to walk together, to share. The things that you have learned, you can share with somebody else. In the situation they're going through that is so dark and dismal, you can come and bring light and life. It's why we should be part of a small group as a church, which is what I'm loving about uh, Alpha at this moment in time. Mind you, it's not a small group. There's 23 at Alpha this last Sunday. 23 people managed to shoehorn them in the small room. I thought close fellowship's going to be good. But I'll have to move somewhere slightly bigger this week, I think. But the whole idea of Alpha is that we would learn something about God and his goodness, but also start to get into a routine of meeting together with others so that when Alpha's over, then small groups can continue from that Alpha group. I'm used to coming together on a Tuesday. Do you know what? I'm going to keep doing that. And it's in those small groups that we're able to be a little bit more intimate and honest that we can share together and you may find somebody who's going through what you are going through or been through what you've gone through and you can recognise that, do you know what? I can boast in my weakness because I've recognised that God is at work and that might just be what is needed for that person who's struggling. And then the other side of things is we draw things to a close is that after uh, we've been through a storm, the, the passion and the desire of Jesus for his disciples is that they might see something in the interaction in the storm that builds their faith for the future. In Mark chapter 4, the end of chapter 4 that we're reading here, where there is Jesus and his disciples in a boat, crossing a lake, the first thing that happens when they land on the other side is they are encountered by a man who is demon-possessed. But not only demon-possessed, who is angry, who is loud, who has a reputation that everybody knows about and it's almost like, oh, you know him down the road. He's a bit of a nutter. But they came to the shore, landed, encountered this guy and he was delivered. He was set free. And you can almost see the disciples sort of cogs whirring in their head. He speaks to storms. He speaks to demons. The storms obey, the demons obey. Do you know... I think I've got to know Jesus better from going through this. And if you read Mark's Gospel, 16 chapters, fast paced, moving through the life of Jesus, what you find out again and again and again is that he is faithful. And every single encounter is an encounter that he gives his followers that would help them to see that he's worth following. James reminds us with these words, come near to God and he'll come near to you. That's the call for us. Let's, in the midst of storms, difficulties, not eject, but let us draw near so that we are aware that God is with us 
and he is for us. I'm just holding on to that thought for a moment, reading. You see, the more you read about Jesus, the more you know about Jesus, the more you know about Jesus, the more you come to realise how faithful he is, and in your circumstances, he has an answer. Somebody said to me recently, they find it really difficult to read the Bible. Um, do you know what it's meant to be? Because it's the Word of God, and the Word of God is the tool that God uses to help us to come to know him, and therefore the enemy desperately wants you not to read it. So there's a battle from the moment. And the moment you pick up the Bible, and if you start reading, as you start reading, as you start reading, and, and you reckon, oh my word, distractions come. That's because the enemy doesn't want you to read. But you focus. You say, okay, I'm going to read this. Get it done. Sometimes people say, do you know what, Dave, I read the Bible, and as I read it, do you know, I, I just forget it. There's no point in reading it because I read it and then I, I, I forget it. The thing about it is, is that you don't forget. The Word of God continues to nourish at all times. I have absolutely no idea what I ate a week ago last Thursday. No idea. Absolutely no idea. But I know it nourished me. Get into the Word. Allow it to nourish you. If you think that I forget, then realise that the Word of God finds a home. Somebody said to me recently, he said, you know what, I used, to, um, I used to read the Bible, and when I used to read the Bible, I used to find myself just going to sleep. So I just don't, don't read it. What we need to do is to change our mindset. You see, I don't know any father who would be angry at his child falling asleep in his arms. That's what the Word of God is. When we spend time in the Word of God, it's like the Heavenly Father comes and wraps his arms around you and holds you. And if you fall asleep, then just know he's with you. He's holding you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. The call is for each and every one of us to recognise storms will come. But Jesus is with you. Let's pray. So thank you, Lord, that no matter what we go through, whatever circumstances that we face, we can trust in the fact that you are with us and you are for us. I pray for any individual here in this room this morning who's facing difficulties and trials, whether that be in relationships or, or finances, whether it's a, a situation with employment or retirement. Whatever the issues we're facing today as your family in this place, we just lay them at your feet. And as we step back, we say, peace, be still. Those raging storms, peace, be still. Holy Spirit, would you step in? Would you intervene? Would you take control? And in the midst of this journey, Lord, help us to know you better. In Jesus' name, amen.